I'm a Libra and an ENTJ, a Samantha, a Slytherin, apparently, uh, and a monkey, according to a placemat that I saw at a Chinese restaurant I used to go to as a kid. People love to put themselves into categories because it helps them feel like they can know themselves better. And that instead of being the stupid, barely sentient bag of meat that I am, I actually make sense. And I fall into these nice, tidy, comforting baskets. When I was a kid, before I knew that astrology was a giant load of bullshit, I remember reading my horoscope and being so confused because Libras are supposed to be so nice and gentle and always seeking harmony. And I figured I must be a really bad Libra. So I actually tried to present those traits to the world, you know, in order to be a better Libra. And I tried to get better at those traits. But, you know, to be honest, I didn't get very far before I realized how completely absurd astrology truly is. So I'm still not very nice or balanced. Uh, And of course, figuring out what house you are in Harry Potter is just as absurd. Actually, less absurd, really, since I think I had to answer a few questions about myself before I was assigned to a Harry Potter house, as opposed to just happening to be born in October. But I still did it, and I was still upset that I got Slytherin. Uh, I haven't really read the books or seen the movies, but I'm pretty sure those are the evil guys. Uh, I'm not even blonde. I think you have to be blonde to be a Slytherin. Anyway, it's stupid, but people, myself included, won't stop trying to find these different categories that they go in. There are even scientists who look at this sort of thing, uh, since to be fair, a lot of science is about cataloging and organizing information to make it easier for us to understand the world around us. We all take species and phyla and kingdoms for granted, But the lines there are messy. Scientists came up with this system because it's one of the best we've got. But we still don't really know what to do with the platypus uh, or what actually makes a species distinct from another species. There are actually several different concepts of what makes a species a species because life is complicated. Considering that we can't even have a hard and fast concept for what makes a species, slotting all humans into a few personality groups is going to be impossible, to be honest. And yet researchers at Northwestern claim that they've narrowed it down to four groups. I'm skeptical. Uh, These researchers took surveys of people in which each person was rated on the five personality traits that are commonly accepted in psychology. Uh, Openness to new ideas, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. They then plotted the results on a five-dimensional graph to see if there were any clusters. They found four clusters, average, reserved, role model, and self-censored. For instance, if you're emotionally stable, not extroverted or neurotic, you're reserved. If you're not neurotic, but you are extroverted and open to new ideas, you're a role model. If you're super extroverted, but not open, agreeable, or conscientious, then congratulations, you're a self-centered asshole, scientifically speaking. But chances are that you are extroverted, neurotic, and not very open, so you're just average. Well, I should say that chances are you're average if you're anything at all, because in fact, the researchers did not find that everyone fit into these groups. Imagine a bunch of points uh, of data scattered around a map, And then you go through and you circle any clumps that you find. You find four clumps, but most of the data points are still outside of the clumps. Did you find anything? It's tough to say. Really, what you've done is you found that if people are forming cliques, these are the four that they might form. But really, most people wouldn't be in a clique at all. This can be helpful for psychologists who are studying human behavior. Uh, Maybe there's something special about those that cluster of people who fell into the self-centered cluster, for example, that makes them react differently in other studies. That might be useful information to know, but it's not useful to you, the average person who is currently at work trying to while away the hours by figuring out what category of things you fit into. No, for you, you're better off just heading over to Pottermore and letting the sorting hat do its thing. Though, I don't care what it says. I'm not an evil Slytherin. Also, my Patronus is Indy. I'm not sure what a Patronus is, but I'm pretty sure he's mine.